so we got to find a way to get you back into the MCU. Man, your new comic book is just off the charts, man. I love that comic book. Hey, what's happening? I'm Richard Cole. This is Amari Music Talk. Rapping with T'Challa here, my co-host. And today, I'm going to talk about the two best Jesse Johnson albums ever. Sadly, they're both out of print or they're hard to find. Um, but I urge you, if you can, seek them out. I'm going to talk about them both today. Um, first, a little background on Jesse Johnson. I uh, started off as a member of The Time and then left in 1984, uh, went solo, came out with three spectacular albums on the A&M label. Uh, those three albums, basically, you know, they kept the Minneapolis sound going. You know, it's kind of his spin on the Minneapolis sound, uh, plenty of funk. Um, the guitar gradually, um, each album was starting to become more prominent. Uh, but you know, back in, you know, major label, they're trying to pressure him to be like Prince or, you know, the pressure to have hit records or sound like what's happening on radio and things like that. So while it was still him producing and they're his songs. He wrote all of the songs uh, on those solo albums. Um, but, you know, if you remember his work in the time as a spectacular guitarist, um, I have a video, um, the three greatest guitarists, which is Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Hazel, Jesse Johnson. You know, Jesse Johnson carries that torch, you know, where it was from Jimmy to Eddie you know, both of those great influences on Jesse Johnson. But, you know, uh, primarily Jesse, like Hendrix and like Hazel, strong blues players. So you hear that B.B. King, you hear that Albert King influence in his playing. Um, but, I mean, you didn't get those in too much in the A&M records. I mean, as great as those records are. Um, profound influence on what I do. Maybe not necessarily with guitar, but just the way Jesse produces, um, how he arranges his songs, the kind of the flow, the style um, that has been a great influence on what I do. Uh, but like I said, we're going to talk about sort of the post major label years, um, post the time reunion with the pandemonium album. So we're going to leap to around 1996 and the release of bear my naked soul. Um, this was released on a, an independent label, uh, dinosaur entertainment corporation. Um, and this is the only thing I know about that label. Um, you know, I don't know if there were any other acts or, you know, if maybe, I don't know, was it something that Jesse created himself or what the circumstances were? But I don't remember getting any advance word that Jesse was working on an album. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, by 1996, um, basically in with the whole Minneapolis thing, you know, I think... Um, you know, Janet was still kind of growing strong. So you had Jam and Lewis still doing that. Um, Morris, I guess, like right in those early stages of putting a new version of the time together. Um, but yeah, you know, by the night, you know, the 90s was a different style of R&B. Neo Soul was coming in. Hip hop had a stronghold. Um, but as far as like what Prince was doing. You know, with the name change, and we were all focused on that, and the albums that were coming out, Gold Experience, Come, Emancipation. So this was a, this was a surprise. Um, I think I was just kind of rummaging through the record, you know, in the record store, and probably vintage vinyl, if I remember, and just kind of going through, you know, like my ritual in record stores, going through all the racks and the different artists and, you know, just trying to see what I could pick up. And, you know, this was in the bin and I'm like, Oh wow, Jesse got a new record. Okay. And, 
Huh. Well, you know, immediately had to get this and bring it home. So brought it home, played it, and was absolutely just blown away. <laughs> um, because I think what, you know, we as Jesse Johnson fans, as again, as great as the A&M albums were, you know, Jesse Johnson's Review, Shockadelica, Every Shade of Love, as great as those albums were, uh, you know, the guitar, like I said, gradually, and especially by every shade of love, it was like, cool, okay, you know, there's more guitar in it. There's more solos in it uh, instead of, you know, just sparsely on the, you know, previous two albums where it was just about the songs, you know, which again, you know, there, it's the Minneapolis sound, it's funk, it's still pretty much contemporary R&B at that time. So, of course, you know, definitely had to have definite strong song structure. Uh, but with this, it was like, man, I mean, from, for me, the, really the opening tracks, well, the opening track is kind of like a, an homage to the opening of Jimi Hendrix electric Ladyland. Um, and see, and I think the title is that was in the gods made love. That. So it's like all these different, you know, sound effects like space and, you know, galaxies being formed and, you know, stuff going backwards or whatever. So the first track is kind of like that homage and it's just like 16 seconds of that. But when it goes into the title track, Bare My Naked Soul, it's like, it's like, what if Jesse Johnson was writing a song for Led Zeppelin. And I mean, you know, it's, it comes in, it's got that kind of like that, um, that kind of cashmere beat to it. And the da na 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 And it's like, oh, okay. So Jesse's not playing on this track. I mean, you know, as far as like, he ain't pulling no, you know, ain't pulling no punches. This is pure stone cold rock and roll and the second track my life it kind of goes into that same vein and this basically lets you know that this is what the tone of the album is um there are some softer tracks um like i miss you know a still um to me which is kind of typical jesse you know kind of mid-tempo ballad um, you know, kind of the lighter guitar, you know, just, you know, real delicate guitar playing on that one. Uh, Cry Like the Skies is another one. Um, and then kind of some typical Jesse Funk with the War Babies, um, that track. Um, Bring Your Love Down Hard on Me, that's pure unadulterated blues. Um, I remember... I had seen Jesse Johnson live twice, and I think about nine. I think it was like 1989, and it was on tour in support of the Every Shade of Love album, and I saw him once in San Francisco, and then once in St. Louis, and there was a segment of the show. You know, he was doing his hits, you know, and doing the stuff that we knew from the albums, the B sides, uh, but there was a segment of the show. You know, he just starts kind of going into the the blues guitar. And he does this cover of Red House by Jimi Hendrix, um, which was spectacular. I mean, I know Prince has a version as well. Um, I don't know. You know, maybe, you know, maybe Jesse has a studio version of his version of um, Red House in the vault somewhere, I guess. But, you know, like I said, he's been one of my favorite guitar players Um one of the greatest, I mean, should be mentioned amongst the giants of rock and roll guitar. Uh, but as far as funk, to me, like I said, that DNA of Hendrix, Eddie Hazel, and Jimmy, you know, or Jesse carrying the torch, you know, carried it on still to this day. Uh, but yeah, I kind of had lost this CD. And eventually, about maybe three, 
maybe three, four years ago, was lucky enough to find this at a decent price. Um, like I said, you can seek it out. Um, you might get lucky and find this, like maybe Discogs for about 20 bucks or something, but most of what you would find like this, um, Jesse's first album on CD, um, of course, Madhouse, The Family, that stuff on CD, you know, people are just charging outrageous prices. So I'm hoping that one day Jesse will reissue this, um, you know, hell, even on vinyl, you know, hopefully one day. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one you should seek out. Um, there may be some tracks that are up on YouTube. I remember kind of looking, couldn't find the entire album on YouTube, but, um, you should be able to find bear my naked soul, my life. Uh, you might be able to find I miss on there as well. If you don't find any other tracks, at least definitely those three, you should be able to find on YouTube. Uh, if I find some links, I'll definitely post them here on the show, on the channel. Uh, so we're going to move to the second of the best Jesse Johnson albums that you will want to seek out. Uh, this is Verbal Penetration, and this was released in 2009. In fact, I can tell you the exact date. It was October, I think, 29th of 2009, which was probably a, if, if I had a favorite of years, that would be amongst those, um, you know, I was kind of starting my own business at the time and, um, getting back into music as far as like writing for myself and things like that. And was heavy into like meditation and all of that. And, you know, it was just a peaceful, it was just a peaceful year. I mean, there was still stuff to deal with, but it was just so peaceful. And the music, I just remember having time to just, ref, just really get into music again, as far as listening. I mean, I always listened, but you know, to where I could just sit back and relax and not have to worry about a, a structure of the social calendar of the day and just listen to music. So um, when I heard that this was going to drop, I was like, okay, cool. You know, cause I dug Bare My Naked Soul, dug that album. So I was like, so I wonder what he's going to come out with next. And I tell you, when I got this, nothing, I couldn't have imagined anything on this. And, you know, we always talk about Prince as a process of growth, whether it's, you know, from the eighties, to the 90s, to where you get the Rainbow Children, where you get musicology, you know, expectation. You talk about that artistic growth. You know, we barely get to see a lot of our favorite artists do that. Some, it's kind of like, okay, it's kind of paint by numbers. And sometimes that's not a bad thing. Um, it's just kind of like, okay, well, with this group or this artist, we know we're going to get this certain sound may not be the hits like it used to be, but you know, you're going to get something good, but you have those artists that constantly challenge you like that, you know, where Prince was one and this definitely shows some growth. Um, to me, like I said, both of these are his best. Uh, but I think as far as production, this edges it out for diversity, this edges it out. Um, it's a two CD set. And like I said, there's nothing on here that I would have expected. Like the songs, you know, where it's like, okay, this is Jesse's style. This is his production. It's like when you hear it, you know, it's him. It was taken into the 21st century. It wasn't like, okay, well, he went and got some tracks out the vault from the eighties and overdubbed a little bit here and there. No, this is pure 21st century Jesse, you know, the title track, um, verbal penetration kicks it all off. And like I said, it's, it's as if, you know, Jesse never left. It's just that here he is, it's the 21st century. And this is how the Jesse Johnson funk would sound. And this time the guitar is there by the time he hits the guitar solo on that, 
it's leaps and bounds away from the classic 80s material for Jesse. Um, like I said, it's diverse. Uh, there's a song called Propaganda that, you know, it's kind of like it's got those, it's got that D'Angelo feel. It, again, it's like as if Jesse was writing a song for D'Angelo. Um, D'Angelo does get a thank you credit on here. Um, I want to guess that maybe they're working together on Propaganda and maybe one or two other songs on this album. But um, at the time, like I said, you really couldn't confirm it. But years later, prior to D'Angelo re releasing, um, uh, I'm drawing a blank, uh, Black Messiah album. Why did I draw a blank on that? That is a fantastic album. Again, that's where D'Angelo was brought to. Well, Voodoo was the 21st century as well. But now that we're well into the 21st century, Black Messiah was definitely a process of growth. Again, that where you're challenged every album, you know, you get a different level of excitement and that level elevates when you do that. Um, but again, like I said, D'Angelo does get a thank you credit on here. Um, the diversity of tracks, like I said, you have songs that again, it's that Jesse Johnson funk, but it's brought to the 21st century. Um, you don't get a lot of the heavy kind of Led Zeppelin Hendrix vibe on this one as much. Um, but it's there. There's one or two tracks where you do get it. Um, there's tracks where, well, the majority of the tracks, Curtis Mayfield is the influence, um, which is great. Um, I love the the playing that's on it. And I mean, it's kind of more like the Curtis Mayfield with the Impressions era kind of song arrangements, not the kind of deep funk that you get with like, you know, Superfly or if there's a Hell Below or something like that. Um, but kind of the more, like I said, the more delicate uh, political vibe of Curtis Mayfield. Um, there's a lot of those type of tracks that are on verbal penetration. Um, you know, I know with interviews that he's done in support of this album, it was the, the mission to find different chords to play instead of, you know, your standard, you know, three chord structure, whether it's rock and roll or, you know, just grabbing that E9 chord and funk and just riding it home. You know, it was like, let me get into some Curtis Mayfield. Let me get into some West Montgomery, you know, again, showing diversity, you know, versatility on the tracks. Um, there's some skits on the album as well. And they're pretty interesting. Like I said, it's, it's a double album. Uh, to me, it stands up amongst the great double albums of music. Uh, the White Album, uh, Electric Ladyland, um, Sign of the Times. You know, it. this definitely stands up to those with, like I said, the wide range of songs. You know, if you're going to do a double album, then you got to flip it here and there. And he succeeds with this album. Um, this is, you know, like I said, this one I've had definitely since 2009, October 29th of 2009. And it is, well, it has been well loved. I can't. I don't know if you can see this kind of the scuffs and the scratches um, like it'll still play. But by the time I get to like the last track or second to last track on the CD, then it starts skipping and doing crazy stuff. Um, this used to be available on streaming. Um, I did manage to get it on iTunes years ago. Um, so when I really want to listen to it, I kind of play that more. Cause like I said, I know I'll get to a point on this where it skips. So I don't know if I can find another copy of it kind of, you know, closer to new, then I'm definitely going to try to pick that up as well. But again, this is another one that should be 
you know, out in the wild. Um, I think there was an interview with Jesse. I want to say Questlove Supreme. Um, at, there was something towards the end of that interview. And he was talking about how he was no longer going to deal with physical media, uh, that the flak files, while I definitely love flak files, um, they're probably the most superior digital sound uh, that you would want to hear. Um, but that being said, you know, I love my physical media. You know, your computer could crash, you know, um, the streaming platforms. Like I said, I don't, um, maybe if you search on, maybe Amazon Music may still have this. Uh, if you could find it there. Um, Apple Music, uh, you won't find it. Like I said, maybe you could still purchase it from iTunes. Uh, I'm not sure. Like I said, I bought, I got mine on iTunes. Oh shoot, probably like 2010, 2012, or something like that. Somewhere around that. Somewhere around that range. But you know, um, but then I saw something on his Instagram. I think where he was talking about uh, reissuing um, "Bear My Naked Soul" on vinyl. Uh, but that was some years ago, maybe three or four years ago since that was last brought up. But yeah, Jesse, if somebody gets this video to you, a diehard lifelong fan, um, would love to see the entire catalog. Now, I know the A&M stuff. I don't know if you own the masters to that or, you know, if that's still A&M or whoever owns A&M now. But if they can do a vinyl of course i have all the vinyl on jesse i don't have the first jesse album on cd um again have to seek that out and try to find one for a decent price but i would love to see that reissued but definitely i would love to see new physical media versions of these two great albums um you might again yeah, maybe check youtube maybe it's Somebody has this posted, some of the tracks, but definitely seek these two albums out. Um, Bear My Naked Soul, Verbal Penetration. Seek them out. Enjoy them. I will envy your first experience because, like I said, I was blown away with both of them. So i um, going to do some deeper dives into both of those albums. Uh, that will be on Patreon. Uh, that way I could do more stuff with the sound bites and stuff. Um, I can play more of the audio without having that darn copyright strike and stuff like that. But yeah, I want to take a deeper dive into each one of those albums. Those will be Patreon exclusives. So become a Patreon supporter. Still running seven day free trial on the $1 tier. So that way you can kind of dip your toe in and see and see what fun stuff you have access to. And if you want to upgrade and get even more fun stuff, do that as well. Uh, if you're listening or watching on YouTube, be sure you like subscribe, hit the notification bell. That helps me out as well. Um, thank you for the continued growth of the channel and look forward to seeing you soon. So until then, create your day, create your life. Peace. I'm